another day, another real world test. Today we're doing on the Google Pixel 8. And as per the usual, we will explore all while we test out this phone. But first things first. I found my personal idea of hell. Oh, these tracks make so much noise. Coffee. Check. And this is Chateau Le Wouf, which was the first dog cafe in the United States when it opened back in 2015. Now apparently the idea for the cafe came to owner Natasa Contini in 2015 in a dream. At the time, she lived in a neighborhood where she would walk her pit bull, King, one mile to the closest coffee shop. One night, she had a dream that she was drinking Cortado with her dog in the cafe. When she woke up, she decided she would open a cafe where she could do just that. The original location was smaller, but now it's a full-on cafe for both humans and dogs, around 4,000 square feet in size, and they also now offer grooming, pet supplies, off-leash play areas, dog birthday parties, weekend jazz brunches, yes, even for the dogs, and even classes on specialty coffee for humans. If you like pups and coffee, it's a good vibe. All right, and while we're here, let's talk about the design of the Google Pixel 8. Firstly, we have the familiar at this point design that Google's been doing for a few years now, starting with the Pixel 6, and then carried over to the Pixel 7, and now, of course, it's here on the Pixel 8. The camera bar, the general size, the shape, and even the materials. And by sticking with that, one, the device is becoming easily recognizable, which I'm sure their marketing department is happy about, but for us, it feels like they're getting better at it. It feels more refined. The Pixel 8 still has a flat screen like the Pixel 7 did. The Pixel 8 Pro this year also has a flat screen for a change from its predecessor, but the frame is a little bit more curved like the 8 Pro is also, and it just makes for a good feeling holding it. But something I particularly like is that they actually made the Pixel 8 smaller than the Pixel 7 by about 0.1 inches, which means that if you dream of a smaller and smaller phone, this attempts to help with that. The display hasn't just shrunk a little, it's also been upgraded this year. We now have 120 hertz, so it can refresh the image on the display up to 120 times a second to make scrolling and animation smoother, and it can drop it down to 60 hertz when 120 isn't necessary to save power. Now this isn't as low compared to the Pixel 8 Pro's new one hertz to save even more battery, but in theory at least, we have a faster display that can hopefully mitigate some of the battery requirements of that a little with that adaptive refresh rate. We also have a brighter display this time around on the Pixel 8 at 2 thousand nits only in direct sunlight as usual but that's still great honestly and it's 600 more than last year and only 400 less than the 8 Pro, so it should be good enough to view it in direct sunlight without an issue. For colors, we have the new rose color that's like a very light pink that I personally kind of really like, but also we have a black and we have a hazel, which is the take on the hazel from the Pixel 7 Pro, but sadly without the dual tone colors that I liked about that model. The Pixel 8 also has a glossy back compared to the matte glass back of the 8 Pro models, which I personally like the matte better, but it still looks nice. We also have our very familiar camera stripe on the back again, helping to differentiate the Pixel phones, and it has a bit of a jewelry vibe to it, which makes sense given the head of Google's hardware design, Ivy Ross's jewelry design background. But also, it means that the phone lays flat and it doesn't wobble if you were using it on a table, which is a small bonus too. Another gripe about the Pixel 7 was the fact that even though they introduced a face unlock feature, it wasn't technically approved as a class 3 biometric, which is a specific class dictating how secure it is so that it can be used for specific things, aka banking apps, for example. Now though, on the Pixel 8, the face unlock is approved as such, and so you can use it for any type of unlocking, including bank apps and even password managers, etc., instead of what you had to do before, which was switch to your fingerprint. It's just a nice daily use improvement, even if the face unlock still isn't that great in low light. This is Socrates Sculpture Park, and it's located here on the edge of Astoria and the East River. Socrates Sculpture Park originally was an abandoned riverside landfill and illegal dump site for decades, up until 1986, when a coalition of artists and community members turned it into an open studio and an exhibition space for artists. The coalition named it Socrates Sculpture Park, both in honor of Socrates, the 
great Greek philosopher, but also as a tribute to the people of Astoria, New York's largest Greek community. The Fellowship for the Park actually provides funding, access to the outdoor studio, and production support for creating ambitious public artworks. The theme for this year's exhibition is Transformation, to represent the park's change from an abandoned landfill to a flourishing gathering space. Now, the pieces in the exhibit have been crafted using discovered and recycled materials that were cleverly given new purpose, reviving objects that were once abandoned or deemed unwanted. It's a very cool use of upcycling. While we're here, though, let's talk about the cameras a bit. And for the most part, they haven't changed much on the Pixel 8 as much as they have on the Pixel 8 Pro. We have the exact same ultra-wide camera from last year with a 12-megapixel 1x2.9-inch sensor with 1.25 micron-sized pixels and an f2.2 Aperture. But thankfully, the Pixel 8 Ultrawide is wider than the Pixel 7, which I always thought was way less useful, thanks to it just being not that different enough from the main sensor for me. We have the same 50 megapixel 1x1.31 1 1 inch main sensor with 1.2 micron size pixels. They get binned in sets of 4 by default to get a 12.5 megapixel image with 2.4 micron size pixels to let in more light, just like last year. But now it's paired with a lens that has an f1.68 aperture instead of an f1.85. The lower the number, the wider the aperture, and the more light can come in. So that translates to roughly 21% more light capture on the main lens. And it's the same as the Pixel 8 Pro. We still also have the same 2x option, which crops out the middle 12 megapixels of the 50 megapixel sensor to give us a two times zoom. It's similar to putting a full frame lens on an APS-C camera body for those from the mirrorless camera world. But again, it should have some improvements for light gathering just because of the aforementioned aperture increase. But as we know, and the Pixel cameras from years past have made blatantly obvious, is that the hardware is definitely helpful, but that software magic is what gives these objectively tiny sensors the chops to punch well above their weight class. And as with all Pixels, there's no shortage of that here too. I'll let you be the judge as always with the photos and videos from the Pixel 8 throughout this video. Now though, there are some interesting new editing features that you can do on the Pixel 8. We still have Magic Eraser like we did before to erase objects or people from your photos, which is now a feature in Google Photos, even though it was a Pixel phone exclusive at one point, but you have to pay for Google One to get it. But the 8 Pro apparently gets an improved version thanks to some sort of on-device AI processing that the 8 doesn't have despite them both having the same chipset. But in a similar vein, we have a feature called Magic Editor that allows you to tap or circle objects or people, but instead of just deleting them, you can actually move them. And it'll try and do that Photoshop-esque edit for you. And you can also edit the sky if you want, similar to Photoshop's generative fill feature for desktop. And sure, it doesn't always get it right, and sometimes it does downright weird things, just like Magic Eraser, but it's still impressive to be able to do so easily and on your phone. And then we have a feature called Best Take, that if you take a succession of similar photos of people in a 10 second period or so, it'll then give you the option after the fact to change the expressions that they made during those photos, but of each person separately. The idea being you don't have to worry if not everyone was on the same page or paying attention, etc. And it can be used for general shenanigans as well. We also have a zoom enhance feature that allows you to zoom in on an image and it'll up it for you to make it clearer, which is a neat idea. And a video boost feature that allows you to upload your videos to Google's servers for them to essentially edit the video for you. And it even enables a night sight video that Google calls it to make dark videos look a lot brighter. Neither of these are available now and are coming in an update in December, but both of them are exclusive to the Pixel 8 Pro for some reason. So they won't come to the Pixel 8 anyway. Supposedly the nighttime video has been improved on the Pixel 8, even without that video boost feature that I mentioned. And you can see what you think throughout the video. And lastly, speaking of things on the Pro that the 8 doesn't have, there's a Pro mode that allows you to adjust way more camera options like shutter speed, ISO, and even focus with a handy focus peaking like my mirrorless camera has to help you see what's in focus as you're adjusting it. Most people will never use this mode. It's exclusive to the Pixel 8 Pro anyway as mentioned, but it feels a bit purposeful to not give it to the Pixel 8 to further separate the Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro. In fact, people have already ported it to older Pixels and it works fine to further make that point clear. Climb, then why make uh, so climbable? Welcome to Vesta Wine Bar. Owners Leo Sacco and Giuseppe Falco, childhood friends from Astoria actually, came together, fueled by their love for Italian food in their beloved neighborhood, and opened Vesta Trattoria and Wine Bar in 2008. And when it first opened, the Italian spot was in a neighborhood that is overwhelmingly Greek in terms of restaurant options. So this seasonally focused Italian spot quickly became a neighborhood favorite. Sometimes you just want to eat something different. At Vesta, they source their ingredients from the local green market and try to keep most of their ingredients as local as possible, including getting their produce from Brooklyn Grange, which is a rooftop farm here in the Brooklyn Navy Yard area not too far from here. Vesta is known for their good wine and pasta, 
but also their baby Jesus cake, a date flavored moist slice covered in a toffee sauce and served with homemade gelato. Apparently it was named while they were tasting the desserts and one of the owner's friends tasted it and said, this tastes like the baby Jesus. Dear Lord, baby Jesus. Giuseppe thinks that that's probably because she had watched Talladega Nights the night before, which makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, besides the cameras, there are a few other software upgrades worth mentioning. Firstly, we have one more eraser feature, and if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know why it's particularly interesting to me, and that's audio eraser. The idea with it is you can record a video and it'll decide what sounds are in the video and pull them as separate tracks basically that you can then adjust separately. So it'll grab my voice versus the general noise around me and give me sliders to adjust both. And then I could potentially remove the noise entirely if I wanted to make my voice more clear. Now the Pixel does have a speech enhancement button that you can set while recording a video that attempts to isolate your voice compared to the background noise around you on its own. But if you use the audio eraser feature without that speech enhancement on, here's what that sounds like. And here is what it sounds like using the speech enhancement on the phone plus audio eraser with our simulated coffee shop sounds. Also, the recorder app, which has always been an amazing voice notes app that is exclusive to Pixel phones. You can actually install it on any Android phone by side loading the APK file, but not everything will always work. But it transcribes things in real time, can allow you to search through that, and even labels speakers as it recognizes different voices. Now though, it can also give you a summary recap of the entire recording. And this is also available for web pages now. And it can also read a web page out loud if you want it to, and even read them out loud in another language. Plus, voice to text has apparently been improved, but I can't can't really tell as it's always pretty good to me and it's really the best voice to text on any device I've ever used. Now though, it can also be used in multiple languages at the same time if you're bilingual. There's also message translations that work on any screen and an interpreter mode as well to translate back and forth for you and another person who speaks a different language. We also have the same features a lot of people love from past Pixel phones like call screening to allow you to screen potential spam calls and get live transcriptions while they're talking. But now the Google Assistant will use conversational AI models to even have a back and forth conversation with the caller on your behalf and you can jump in as needed. And we still have hold for me, where it'll wait on hold for you, then let you know when a human actually answers so that you don't have to wait by listing out the buttons to press when you call certain customer service phone numbers, etc. And Google announced that when their integration for Bard, their chat GPT competitor, comes into Google Assistant, Pixel phone users will get access first. Also, Google is now saying there will be seven years worth of updates for the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro, which got cheers from the audience when that was announced. It's finally a longer period than any other Android device out there. Pixel 6 and 7 were three years, for example. And it's even longer than Apple, who doesn't give official numbers for support, but the iPhone 10 just lost support for iOS updates, and that came out about six years ago. It's just a welcome thing to see the creator of Android offer. And most of what I just mentioned will be exclusive to Google Pixel phones, and some, as I mentioned before, only to the Pixel 8 Pro even. And that brings us to a very important point. Google is purposely limiting software features to entice you to buy newer phones. They might say it's because of the processor or whatever hardware excuse they give, but a lot of these features eventually make their way to Google Photos, for example, like Magic Eraser did after a short Pixel exclusivity period. Or they've already been hacked onto other phones. Now to be clear, Google is not the first to do this, nor are they the only one currently doing it. The latest iPhone 15 Pro models have done much of the same. But Google seems to be leaning into it harder than ever. Regardless, it gives me a bit of a conundrum. On the one hand, I hate when companies purposely limit features based on software or whatever hardware excuse they have, but honestly, we're gonna be seeing this more and more from technology companies, not just Google, as it helps them increase value without increasing the manufacturing costs of their devices. And so long as these features don't just show up in Gmail or Google Photos or whatever other service in a bit, they are still useful features. Pixel 8 died a bit earlier today and I recharged it with my battery pack that I have. But here is my screen on time my usage for anyone who cares about that for today. As always, keep in mind, real world test day. It's not a normal day. I use my camera way more than you ever would. But here is another day where it was a lot more normal of a day. So you at least have something to compare it to. Now honestly, Pixel battery life has never really been amazing. It used to be a lot worse, but 
now it's it's better, it's just not amazing. And this Pixel 8 does have a larger battery. It has a 4,575 milliamp versus the 4,355 milliamp from last year. Plus it also has a three nanometer processor, which is just a more efficient type of chipset, the new Tensor G3. And with all that, I do think it is better than the Pixel 7's battery life, if only by a little bit. It's still, it's nice that it's at least better, I guess. Bottom line though, you might want a battery pack with you if you plan to be away from a plug for the majority of the day. Now, something interesting here is that both Pixels are actually $100 more than they were last year. So this is $699 instead of the $599 that it was for the Pixel 7 last year, which puts it closer in competition with some other top mid-range devices. So now that's just something more to consider. But you guys let me know if you'd go for the Pixel 8 with its slight price increase and its software limitations that we discussed earlier. Also, let me know what you guys thought of this video, my weird little format. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. If you're not subscribed though, please subscribe and ding the bell next to the word subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. We're gonna explore a lot more places with a lot of new tech, so stay tuned for that. I will leave a link in the description below down to the Pixel 8 Pro wearable test if you wanna check that out. But it has been a long day of filming. As always, I'm exhausted, so good night. So many cars on this road. I made a mistake. As always. Again, helping to differentiate the pickle... Pickle phones. Pickle phones! They should be called the pickle phones. Jingly pups. Jingly pups. Always jingly pups. Makes sense in a dog cafe. <laughs> Checks out. Was way less useful. Brakes. Squeaky brakes. But it's now paired with a lens. What are we doing? Sound like someone was closing a gate. I thought I was getting trapped in here. It's a lovely place to get trapped, really. There's even bathrooms, porta potties. All right, it wouldn't be smooth. We also have a zoom enhance feature that. Whoops. For you. People are standing three feet apart and they just scream at each other. I don't know why. It's very strange. I'm not bitter. You're bitter. An annoying truck? Truck. Yeah, it sounds like a truck. It's a semi, to be specific. A lorry, you would call it over in the UK. It's a garbage truck. I think that's also still a lorry. And even enables. Now it's a screaming child. Can't win. It's windy. It's windy on the park on the river. Strange. Oh, oh, angry pups. Ready? All the pups. So many pups. In fact, people have already ported it to older pixels and it. Nope, giant. Oh, something just banging over. Banging over things. Just a banging, banging, bang, 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 bang. Bless you. I think a dog just sneezed. Most people will never use this mode. It's exclusive. Woof, 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 woof. It's a guy doing leaf blowing. He's leaf blowing in the middle of the night. This kind of crap only happens to me. I'm pretty sure no one else would be doing that right now. He felt I was out here and was like, I should probably blow some leaves around. Yeah, yeah, I think this is a good idea. What time is it? Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. David's out there. I should do it. Can't be that many leaves. Now Vesta is known, nope, he's coming back with the, the, the blower. He's still going. Racing to the red light. It's a good reason to throttle your engine out. 